So uh, here we are, late Thursday, here with Enrique. And we came back, we were here a few weeks ago at the food bank here out in Indio. And we wanted to come check it out again and just kind of share with you just how bad things are. I just started filming uh, from the freeway down there. The food bank is at least two times bigger than it was four weeks ago, roughly when we were here. I cannot believe uh, how many cars are at this food bank today, Enrique. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we were driving over here, and uh, JB was just joking around and says, "Hey, you know, is that the line for the food bank?" Sure enough, it was, and it's way, way longer. I would say, probably with all the cars here compared to last time, those people in the back are probably going to have to wait an additional forty minutes to an hour, maybe. On top of, I mean, last time people were waiting two hours. If you're way back there, yeah, yeah, three hours. You got about three hours. And it looks like they, they turn off their vehicles. Like they don't even have them on. So, so yeah, so it could be a while. So let's take a walk down here. And it's going to be a long walk because this food bank is a mile away. And the line goes beyond Interstate 10. So we'll get down here a little bit, give you the gist of things. But this is all people waiting for the food bank. It goes all, I mean, you can't even see how far this is. It's a mile down here. There are hundreds, hundreds of cars waiting in line and again this just reinforces with all of us that things just are not as good as they have been telling us Enrique yeah no it's it, it's 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 astonishing to see that that many people are in need of uh, extra food supplies before you know people were able to afford all these things yes there might be a couple people taking advantage of the system but I think that this is getting kind of out of hand, don't you think? Yeah, a hundred percent. That's a good way to put it. It's totally out of hand. And I know people are going to say that, oh, look at these nice cars. I see Camrys and I see um, some nice Infinities and some nice Hondas, newer cars. Most of the cars are newer. And I don't think what people understand is that, you know, these people, most of these people probably all work. And most of these people rent or have a home. The problem is over the last couple of years, the inflation has gotten so bad with auto insurance, property insurance, rents have skyrocketed. Uh, uh, even your phone has gotten more expensive. The utility bills have, have gone through the roof, everything. And so what happens is when you pay all your bills, there's nothing left. And so now you don't have any food. So people are trying uh, to compensate any way they can. Let me tell you, you do not wait in a line for three hours for food, in my opinion, unless you really, really need it. Yeah, so I was telling JB today that um, I have a client that walked into the office today and uh, they're actually starting to go through a short sale, which I haven't heard anyone go through a short sale in a very long time. Not only that, but the insurance costs are getting out of hand as well. I had another client today, they said that between the, the two of them, they were paying close to $3,000 a month in health insurance, close to 60 years old, so they're just waiting out until they can get into Medicare. So those things are causing people to have to come to lines like these, you know, wow. it could be anybody. I mean, I guess, uh, welcome to America and the American dream, right, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, get a, get a load of this. This guy's like selling popsicles over here. These people, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, Range Rover just went by. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's a monthly payment is uh, eleven hundred dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, there are some really nice cars here, and and yeah, there's always people that are going to take advantage of the system. But honestly, I don't think the majority of these people are doing that. I think a majority of these people over the last couple of years have fallen so far behind. Uh, even interest on their credit cards at twenty nine percent. Everything has gotten so expensive. Of course, food has gotten expensive. Childcare, uh, it's super expensive. Uh, so what do you do? I mean, we're seeing major food insecurity now in America. This is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this just goes on and on and on and on. And uh, this didn't just open an hour ago. This thing's been open for hours. The last time guy told us that this thing's open all day. So how many cars have we already missed? How many hundreds of cars uh, have already come through here to get food? Yeah, so I would say easily today, you're probably serving what, maybe a thousand families? Oh, if that. There's 500 cars here right now. <laughs> oh, so probably more. <laughs> I mean, probably, probably uh, you know, three, four thousand families. Yeah, I mean, there's thousands of people that probably 
uh, got food here today. I mean, there's at least 500 cars. I mean, the line started back past Interstate 10, uh, and it's going to continue, and it's uh, been going on for hours. So, uh, just a, a, another shocking reminder of what's happening in the United States of America: food insecurity. And you know, Enrique, how much worse can this get? I think you know. I was talking to JB, and I really do think that this is not this is not going to be the end. There's going to be more and more people still wanting to get food like this. So. I expect it to get worse. I don't think we're I don't think we're there yet. You know, now here's the the, the next problem. It's going to be job losses, and I guarantee you, nice uh, SUV right there, nice pickup truck SUV. Nice, it's going to be layoffs, people losing jobs, and just trying to hang on now to their house, their apartment, their vehicles. Um, think about you know we're talking today, thirty thousand vehicles a day being repossessed. Sid called me uh, the other day. Uh, he was on a job somewhere and a young lady had a car repossessed at the place he was working at you know she's in tears how does she go to work now what happens now if you lose a job how do you get to how do you get to the food bank if you don't have a car yeah so there might be a couple people here that there might be more than one family in the car yeah i didn't even think about that yeah. these They're, people are trading vehicles yeah so think about it you got an suv maybe you got two families in there yeah so just because you see one car, it doesn't mean it's one family. That's a great point. So yeah. multiple people in these cars need help, multiple families. They, you know, if there's three people in a car, it might be representing three families. So, um, yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, but, it, you know, sometimes you just have to get out and check this stuff out and walk it and really you get a feel for what's going on. You, know, you can listen to the news all day and you can listen to people and you can listen to content creators tell you this and that but it's a whole different thing when you actually get out here and walk it for yourself and you really have an understanding of what's going on I know a lot of people will say oh you know JB said this that and he's wrong and that whatever I'm out here walking around here today it's a hundred and what eight hundred and eight and we thought it was important enough to maybe walk out here and show all of you what's going on so that you know uh, you don't doubt yourself things are bad you know they're bad uh, just because somebody on television tells you they're not, uh, doesn't mean <laughs> that things are good. Um, all you have to do is, is take a little walk here and you realize really, really quick that uh, things are even worse than we first thought. So the line just goes on and on. Food bank's down there about a quarter mile. Uh, Enrique, what else? Yeah, so again, you know, the more people that you talk to on the street, you realize that uh, they're just not right right now especially with their car payments. Yeah. Several people are falling behind. Maybe they're, instead of paying the car payment right on time every single month, now they're paying, you know, one payment behind. Credit cards now starting to get topped off. Some people are telling me that, you know, they have, it's very hard for them to be able to afford all the monthly payments that they have. And a lot of them are even starting to consider that bankruptcy through their head, which sometimes family members try to tell them not to do it. But I think eventually I'm going to start hearing more and more people actually do file bankruptcy, as I've heard. And so, like I said again, all of these expenses, they're just overwhelming. And oh, so, especially during the holidays, I feel like these lines are going to get worse. Oh. Because people are going to want to still continue giving gifts out and continue to put food on the table. And so what are they going to do? They're going to run to the food banks to be able to uh, supplement what they didn't have before. Right, that's a good point. And, and just to add to that, they said 20% of card holders, credit card holders are tapped out, maxed out. 20% are already maxed out. What do you do if you're maxed out at this point? Yeah, so if you're maxed out, then what do you do? You start pawning, right? So uh, there's a lot of people that are starting to pawn stuff. If you're pawning something worth $100, you're only going to get $10 out of those people. Yeah. And then eventually, you're going to have to uh, pay that money back with interest. And if you don't, all your assets are going to be gone. So I remember during the last uh, downturn that we had several years ago, uh, I, I knew a lot of people in the construction trade. They ended up losing a lot of their tools because they had to pawn them out. So then when I was looking for uh, contractors, uh, they wanted the money up front yeah. because they wanted to go collect their tools that they had just pawned so that they could work on the job site. So it's going to get pretty bad. Yeah, and you know, if you're down to having to pawn uh, your goods at a pawn shop, I mean, you're at the end of the rope. That's just the way it is. But uh, yeah, you can see all, I mean, just all the cars up here. 
It's unbelievable. I've never, last time we were out here, I said, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen so many people waiting for food. And we get here today and the line is minimally twice as long, maybe two and a half, three times as long. I don't know, it's super long. Uh, this is unbelievable. This is a, a real eye opener. And again, watch TV today, stock markets up, uh, the euphoria, the, the Magnificent Seven, everything's fine. Um, but the reality is that's not helping the working class. That's not helping the middle class or the lower class. And, you know, I know that there's going to be 10 people that comment saying these people are just using the system. Look, there's always going to be people using the system. I guarantee you the majority of these people need help. I've never seen the economy this bad. I've never seen the debt this bad. We've never seen things this bad. And if you want to sit here, wait in your car for three hours for food uh, in 108 degree weather, and you got nothing better to do, God bless you. These people are here because they need to be. What do you think? So there's a lot of food insecurity in America. I've always uh, uh, researched and uh, it looks like it's getting worse. Now the thing is, is what type of uh, food are they getting out here? It's mm. probably not going to be the best quality. Right. So it'll just pretty much just keep you fed and alive. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's good quality food. The good quality food is even more expensive. Yeah. And it's getting uh, very, uh, very hard for the average American to be able to eat well and to be able to get all the nutrients they need to be able to get ahead in life. That's um, that's a great point. You're gonna get the minimal quality of food, better than nothing, right? I'd rather have, you know, I'd rather eat bread than not eat at all. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be the minimal. And people now, uh, their diets, uh, their health, everything um, is definitely going to, uh, impact them at some point uh there when you don't have money you're less selective you don't get the quality foods the quality proteins but uh at the end of the day when you're hungry you, you eat whatever you can get and that's where uh, these people are at right now so i don't know um it's a sad reminder of uh reality and you can see the cars behind me uh this is uh i, I just cannot believe as we came out here today that we would see this and uh, we're going to go, uh, on a, we were just on our way to go drop off some uh, supplies to the homeless people and some dog food to their pets, help them out. So we're going to kind of cut through Indio, see if we can find some people out today and drop that off. I want to thank everybody. S some people uh, send me little donations. That money goes to putting gas in the car, pays for the dog food, pays for the bottle of water, pays for the supplies, uh, pays to buy Enrique, you know, dinner for, for helping out. Thank you, Enrique. Um, because, you know, it takes hours to do all this stuff. You got to go to the store, get the stuff, walk around, find find the homeless people, get out, take care of them. We love to do it. I think if you help people that need help and you do something good, I think God will do something good for you. To me, it's a tithe. I'd rather take my time and money and personally give it to somebody and see where it's going versus just throwing it, you know, in an offering tray at a church for some pastor to drive off in a Cadillac. Because I think the churches, for the most part, 99% uh, of them have checked out and are nothing more than corp greedy corporations. So it just feels good to get out, help some dogs, help some people. And of course, film this video and show you what's really going on because there's still people out there telling you that everything's rosy, everything's good, and you know it's not. So you can see all the cars we're walking by here today. I mean, the places, I mean, Jeez, it's unbelievable. But uh, anything else you want to add that, Enrique? Yeah, so I've always believed in giving back. Uh, you know, sometimes people feel like, oh yeah, I'm just giving, you know, $50 or $20. Whatever you can afford, you know, just give whatever you can. You know, if you see someone on the street that you can tell that, you know, they need your help. Yes, there's some people that might be taking advantage. But sometimes if you give them, you know, your bottled water or maybe you know if it's cold you give them a beanie or maybe you give them some socks or you give them some supplies for them to be able to take care of themselves on the street any little thing helps even if you do it you know once or twice a month it makes you feel good it does it does and i think god uh definitely uh is definitely gonna bless people who help the people that need the help and you know there'll always be people out there going oh 
those people deserve it. And, but I see a lot less of those people. There's a lot less people judging now because the same people years ago that used to judge and criticize and make fun of these people, they're in trouble now. So now uh, they've got swept into this this vacuum of uh, this latest depression uh, that we're seeing. So it's not so funny anymore. Uh, people are judging less because now people are in the same boat. So I always say don't uh, judge these people because any one of us could be here tomorrow. Uh, and it's another reminder why I say put the cash reserves away. Uh, don't be buying stupid stuff. Don't be buying big ticket items right now. You don't know if you're gonna lose a job tomorrow or next week. Anything could happen. You gotta really prepare for the worst case scenario. So protect yourself. Uh, this just continues to go on. So, you know, how many people right now, and I asked this to Enrique, if the, many of these people right now had a major emergency, not even a major, uh, a $500 emergency, yes. what would they do? Many of them would either, either try to get a loan from a family member that's a little bit better while off, and then probably they won't even be able to pay it back, or a lot of them will probably get, get into debt with some sort of payday loan, yeah, yeah. or a credit card, or maybe a title loan on their vehicle. I mean, there's different ways, creative ways that you can get into debt to be able to uh, satisfy uh, the short term uh, amount that you have to pay uh, that month. So we've got the legal loan sharking going on. It totally takes advantage that preys on people that are losing it all. So, you know, I've been saying for years, don't allow yourself to get in this position. A lot of people didn't want to listen. A lot of people wanted to continue the party. They wanted to drive the big cars. They wanted to live the lifestyle. They wanted to do the Vegas trips. They wanted to, uh, continue to spend, spend, and spend. And they didn't think about what would happen if the economy slowed down, what would happen if they lost a job. A lot of people thought they would just get another job tomorrow. Good jobs are so hard to find now, so so hard to replace. So, you know, many of these people uh, probably were not prepared or even ever thought that they would be in this line today. Yes, again, you know, I would always try to make sure that you have your preparation Sometimes you even have to prepare as if tomorrow you would be homeless. Because if you do that, then at least you know that if something happens, you have your, your stuff. And again, you do have to also be preparing yourself in the form of some sort of training. So in case someone does want to go after your assets, at least you can put up a fight. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's very important. Let's walk down here a little bit to the end. We we'll walk down here to this parking lot. The cars are still coming in. Um, my heart goes out to people. You know, I feel blessed that you know, I can eat, have a place to sleep, and, and, I, and I feel blessed that, you know, uh, there are services that can help people, which is great. Uh, but think about also how many people are also on food stamps in this country, 44 million. How many people are living on Social Security right now? Many of these people, Enrique, how many people right here today could be on Social Security that it's just not cutting it? They're on a limited budget and there's, you know, there's seventeen hundred dollars a month in Social Security. Uh, how do you live? Yeah. So the average person is probably getting maybe around, you know, fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars a year of Social Security. Yeah. And uh, that's really not going to cut it, especially if that's your only source of income. Pensions are pretty much disappearing for all the new people now. So unless you know you're older and you're getting some sort of pension that you qualify. A lot of people are liquidating their assets, you know, their IRAs, their 401ks. A lot of that has been liquidated these past couple of years, especially because of inflation. There's been a lot of people have been liquidating that. So now what? So now you just got Social Security and you don't even know that's going to be around. So probably a good number of these people. Yeah. Which a lot of these people are not like spring chickens, right? Yeah. No, uh, no. A lot of these people are probably Social Security. Yeah, there could be some Social Security recipients here. And also yeah. a lot of these people probably don't have anything in their retirement. Yeah. Which means that if tomorrow they wanted to retire, they would not have anything. And a lot of them aren't even uh, homeowners. And even if they are, the homes right now, they're getting very expensive to be able to maintain and afford because of the rising uh, house insurance, property tax. All states are going to raise uh, property rates here in California 50%. Yeah, so if you look at all that, you know, even becoming a homeowner is getting to be a headache. Now can you keep yeah. the home? Yeah, exactly. So a lot of these people, sometimes it's actually better off. You're actually better off to rent in some cases yeah. now because of that, right. because of all the rising costs. So this goes way uh, past the overpass there. The cars are still coming in. It goes way beyond there, all the way down. Unbelievable. Um, so uh, we'll keep you uh, 
up to date with what's going on here, coming to you from Indio, California today. Uh, it is absolutely shocking. Uh, what's happening uh, to this country is absolutely appalling that uh, we're going to give $150,000 uh, home loans, no interest free to people from other countries. And this is where the Americans are today. The Americans are waiting in line for food for three hours. How do you like that? So we just uh, drove up the street past the uh, freeway uh, overpass. So this line has gotten even bigger. It goes all it goes all the way down there now. We're on the other side of the ten. Goes all the way down there. There's literally a hundred cars just to the freeway here from from there to there. Another hundred cars. So what do you? Uh, What's your response to this? This is absolutely out of control. Well, like we said before, you know, last time we came, we thought it was bad. This time it's worse. If we come back here a month from now or maybe closer to the holidays, this line will probably be another half a mile long at the rate we're going now. There's probably a lot more people that want to continue getting this food. So you add the people that already have come before and then you add all the word of mouth during the holidays. A lot of people want to go ahead and supplement you know, whatever money they bring in, if they cannot afford everything, they want to put gifts on the table, they want to be able to provide a decent Christmas. How do they do it? They come here and they supplement it with the food from the food bank. So from here, there's about 50 cars down to where the last car is. How long do you think it's going to take for that gentleman or that lady? Another one just pulled up. Now there's a, yeah. uh, a little SUV that pulled up behind it. Uh, so how long do you think it's going to take for that last car way out there? to get food tonight i would say probably another three and a half hours yeah. i mean we're 6 p.m right now maybe nine yeah at least yeah at least and a lot of these cars what i've noticed right now we're in a hundred and what eight degree weather right now a lot of them what i've noticed and we've noticed driving through is they'll shut off their vehicles which yeah. means it takes a while for the cars to advance right when we were in the parking lot no cars were moving no. so the yeah. the the food bank is so busy with people they might be limited with uh, helpers i don't know but the cars are moving so slow yeah but you got to think like what time in the afternoon did this all start it didn't just open because we were here like three o'clock last time yeah and now it is uh it is a little after six yeah see so more than likely the people at the back right now they'll probably get their stuff maybe two to three hours later uh, at least three which, which they probably don't mind i mean if it's a decent amount of food i mean maybe it's worth it to them let's uh, i'm gonna see if i can zoom in down there and for everybody so that's where it starts another car pulling up at the end uh so you have all this wraps around goes under the freeway wraps around you got at least uh enrique what about a two mile line here at least at least yeah at yeah, least two miles at least two miles and so yeah like i said again if they give you let's say 60 dollars of food and you're waiting three hours that's 20 dollars an hour right there so yeah. instead of you know working getting your food here yeah a lot of people maybe they're unemployed maybe they're underemployed we don't know or if you are working you got to wait three or four hours to get food it's taking a lot yeah. of a lot of time out of your work schedule yeah um, and I would say that a lot of these people are probably people that work part-time yeah uh, a lot of these people probably have lost jobs a lot of people are on on Social Security yeah. there's a lot of different types of people here different ages too uh, and again a lot of these people are driving nice cars but Hey, these people were probably doing very, very well a few years ago. Would you agree? And now uh, what we've seen happen in the last three and a half years with inflation uh, and now massive job losses and a failing economy, this is what you get. This is the end result of what you get. And I hate to say this, it's going to get much worse. Yes. So prepare. Okay. Prepare. Make sure you have everything in place. So don't case, lose a job. Real quick. Yep. Don't lose your job. Do what you got to do to keep your job. What would you say to that? Yeah, don't lose your job, you know, and if you do end up losing your job, prepare because tomorrow that could be you trying to get into that food line. Prepare before you lose your job. Exactly. Yeah, if you do, if you do prepare, you don't have to be in this food line. Right. You got, uh, you know, if you are prepared and, and we've said many, many times, have that cash reserve six months, 12 months, you say 18 months if you buy a house. Make months. sure you have 18 months of reserves put away. Um, if you lost a job today, you would not go into mass chaos. You would just chill out you would reassess the situation you have time 
you can go a whole year because you put the reserves away. But for the person, 80% of this country living paycheck to paycheck, eight out of 10 people living paycheck to paycheck, if they lose a job today, their life has turned upside down instantly. Yes. Because they have no money. No money, man, no money. So again, prepare. You have what you need. You don't have to be in this food line. You can eat well. You can do well for yourself. And, and, and I want to say uh, one other thing. There are people out there that go, oh, JB, money is everything to you. It's all about money. That, If you believe that, you don't watch the show because money is not my God. Money is a tool. Money is an instrument. Money means that if your kid falls down, needs 10 stitches at urgent care tonight, you go over there, you take care of it. Money means if you're hungry, you go to the grocery store, you take care of it. Money means that if you want to send your kids to a better school, uh, you can do that. Money means that you don't have to ru run on, uh, take a ride on public trans transportation uh, and deal with, with that uh, mess. Money allows more freedom. Money allows you uh, to make better choices. Money keeps you safer. Money allows you uh, better health, better food, right? Uh, so these people who say, oh, money's your God, not at all. I look at money purely as an instrument, purely as a currency uh, in order to buy things, to live a better, more comfortable life, to have more freedom. The less money you have, uh, if you have no money, you are 100% dependent on the system. And when you're 100% uh, dependent on the system, guess what? This is where you land up. That's why it's good to have some money put away. Don't worship money. Use it for what it was intended as a tool, as an instrument, as a currency. Um, don't worship it. That's not what I do, and I hope you don't either. It's nice to have nice things. Nothing wrong with that. But money to me allows me to have a choice in life. It allows me to have some freedom. Anything you want to add to that? It's never too late to cut the fat. Look at all your monthly expenses, whatever you can cut. Do it little by little. It'll come to you. Even if it's 2 $3 a day, $5 a day, whatever it may be, before you know it, you could start saving your money, putting it into either gold, silver, or some sort Cash. of a savings account to be able to provide better security for your family. Cut the bars out. That's a hundred yep. bucks on Friday night, Saturday night. Cut the dinners out, cut yep. the weekend trips out. Yep. You know, a lot of these people, unfortunately, probably didn't do that. When things were good, uh, they were good and the party went on. Yeah. And I'm not saying that about all, all these people. These are probably mainly really good people. Yeah. But a lot of people made mistakes. They never thought that bad times were going to come. We saw this in the 08 crisis when everybody was making money, real estate was booming. Mm -hmm. uh, people said it was going to go on forever, like they're saying right now. Mm -hmm. And boy, were they wrong. Yeah. So again, anything you can do to be able to start your journey, to be able to have that, that preparedness, so that you don't have to fall into these types of uh, lines or any type of a uh, situation like this it's better for you because you never know things are just going to keep getting worse for the meantime so if you have these issues where you know you have money just you know uh, not being able to uh, save start somewhere start small and before you know it it'll just balloon bigger and bigger and you better hurry yep